top shelf. All right, this is how to play City of Iron 2nd Edition. The object of this game is to collect the most influence points uh, by the end of the game. There'll be three scoring phases throughout the game on rounds three, five, and seven. Each round, or each scoring phase, you'll score points based on where you are at on the goods track for each good. So for instance, if you are the farthest one on the sheep track, you will gain two victory points. If you're the second highest one, you'll gain the smaller number, one victory point. And you'll do that for every good um, until every good's been scored. Also, you'll score points for any buildings that you've built in front of your city that grant influence points. For instance, this building gives you one influence plus one influence for every three sheep you have. In this case, I have six sheep. I would score an additional two influence on top of the one. Um, so each scoring phase, you'll score those points. There's two ways to get goods. You can purchase buildings. Um, as you purchase a building and put it in your city, you'll gain the goods indicated on the card. Or you can attack towns and gain those goods and put them in your, when, when you put them in your city. When you purchase a building and put it in your city, each city it has a, a limit on how many buildings it can hold. For instance, you start with one city that has a capital district. It can hold five buildings and it's going to give you one citizen draw at the end of each round. Um, so if I purchase the docks, I would pay the indicated resource. I'd pay the indicated resource, which would be four gold and two science. Also, I have to have a city that has that in this icon, which in this case I do. So I'd be able to purchase the docks, place it in my city. I would then increase my good track for the uh, tentacles by two. In this case where I do not have any, I would go ahead and put my cube up there, indicating I have two uh, tentacles now. The other way to ob obtain goods is to attack these cities. Um, attacking cities, you have to play cards from your hand, have the attack symbol and the distance symbol. So for instance, I would need to play cards that, equal f that would give me a total of four attack, and then I'd also have to play other cards that give me a total of one distance in order to attack this Lylark and, and defeat it. Um, cards can only be played for one symbol as indicated on their, on their card. You can't play it as an attack and a distance. You have to choose for each card that you play. Um, so if this was my initial card, I would then uh, you say I'm going to use the attack and my scholar I'm going to use the distance and I would continue to add cards down until I have a total of four attack and one, one range or one distance. I would then take the Lylark, put it in my area, and now I would increase my goods for these by two. So I'd go up here, which I don't have any, so I'd place my cube, and now I have two goods in that resource, uh, which will score influence at, at, during each scoring phase. You can have as many towns in your tableau as you want. In order to gain more cities and to gain more capacity, you can go up and explore new cities. In order to do this, you have to play the explorer action. And this allows you to start a new city with a military or trade district. Um, so it allows you to use either a military district or a trade district. To do this, you'll, similar to attacking, you need to have enough distance equal to the new land that you want to take over. Every card, in order to use the ability over here, you have to use, you have to pay the resource as indicated on the left side. So for this one, we need a distance equal to the new land we want to take over. Um, distance on these new cities is indicated right here. This one requires a distance of seven. That's pretty far. Maybe we'll try for a distance of four. Um, once we, so then we would go ahead and play additional cards down that we have to gain the distance we need. So that would be one distance. That'd be two distance. And that would be three, four, that would be my four distance I need. Um, remember this distance on the card you play does not count. Then I could take this city, put it in my area, and remember I can put a military or trade district. District will make it a military. So now this city can hold two buildings and it'll give me a military card draw. After cards have been played, they'll be discarded into their appropriate decks 
And when you discard into the appropriate decks, you get to choose the order that the cards get placed in. So I can choose to put my citizens down in this order. And when I go to draw and I need to, to draw another card, I'll take my discard deck, flip it over, and then draw from there. So you get to choose the order that the cards are in, and you'll know the order that they're gonna come up in. So that's, that's oh, also when you go to explore a city, if your city has an icon up here, whether an airship icon or a ship icon, you need to make sure that you play a card that has either the ship icon on it or the airship icon on it in order to be able to explore that city. Um, you, can, you can use this explore icon on top of the distance as well. All right, so that is attacking. That's gaining more goods. That's gaining more resources. Let's go over the flow of the game and how it works. So the first, the, you got a cheat sheet right here. You got your spring, summer, autumn, and winter. During the spring, you'll slide your cubes down from the, uh, from the turn track down in here. You'll keep the cubes in the same order and starting on this left side, players will vote on their new turn order. And once that is, they'll either gain or pay coins to be in the slots, a free slot, or you can gain a coin. This will determine the turn order. Once turn order is done, we do the summer actions. During the action phase, there's seven actions that you can take. You can build, which is paying the resource on the building up here and having the indicated uh, city type. You put that in your tableau, gain the goods, and increase your income by one. Everybody has an income track on their board, and they would move that up. Next is you can draw a card. You can draw a card from either your citizen deck or your military deck. You can have as many in your hand as you would like. You can store a card. You can choose a card that you can't purchase yet or one that you just want to hang on to and you'll store it. You can store as many as you like and in the future you can purchase these cards from your, from your store pile. You can attack, having the indicated attack and the required distance to either attack a unconquered town or a conquered town in, a, in your opponent's play area. This allows you to take resources from your opponent by attacking them. You can research by paying four coins to gain one science book. You can tax, which is gain one coin, or you can play expert actions, which is where you pay, play a card from your hand, um, gain the required resources to use this action, and then gain or do the special ability of that action. After each player has done three actions, the, you'll move to the autumn phase and during the autumn phase, you'll discard old buildings. You'll discard the first four building cards and place them in. Well, you'll slide all these down and then place four new buildings on. Then if it's the third, fifth, or seventh round, you'll do a score phase, doing the scoring that we talked about. Fourth, you'll collect coins. You gain coins by having the most influence, having the most uh, goods in each resource. Um, for each one, you'll gain one coin. Also, you'll gain science equal to the cards you have in front of you that give you science. If I had the academy in front of me that would give me one science, I would then gain that resource during the, the collect coins and science phase. I would then draw military and citizen cards. You draw based on the symbols in your tableau that give you citizen and military cards. The capital district would let you draw one citizen card. Military district would allow you to draw one military card. Other cards will also let you draw so you can gain more cards into your hand. Next, you'll advance the round counter. So you'll advance the round counter down. If this was the third phase during, that score, or during the scoring round, you would also gain a science book, in, which is reminded on the board. So you advance the track down. You would then go to the winter phase where you purchase new citizen and military cards. So everybody would grab their buy pool deck and they can search through any of the cards in their buy pool and purchase the card and then uh, put it into their hand. The cost of a card is down here. This one costs five coins and one science. And this would allow me to gain the Raven ship. The Raven ship has a reaction ability, which is indicated by the check mark. 
If you use this card as part of an explorer action, you gain one influence and you gain a citizen card. Uh, so that's how you purchase cards. You can purchase as many as you want as long as you have the resources to pay. You'll take all the cards you're going to purchase, place them face down, and simultaneously everybody will reveal the cards and pay their indicated resources. You will then go to the spring phase and start all over again. You'll continue this process until seven rounds have been completed. During the seventh phase, you'll do a final scoring round, which is like normal, but then you will also score points based on your cities. Um, for instance, the Endless Plains, you'll gain two influence if you have the most owned towns. Um, whereas Misty Valley will give you two influence if you have the most city distance. After that scoring phase is complete, whoever has the most points wins a game.